Hello and welcome to ISSA TV Online, and I am Clark Bartram, your host, bringing you the best information in the world on how you can make additional money as a personal trainer. And I am in San Marcos, California today with a very, very good friend of mine and one of the hardest working guys I know in the industry, and his name is Michael Kish, owner of International Fitness. Michael, how are you doing today? I'm doing really good today, uh, Clark. Uh, but you know, before we get started, my man, I gotta ask you, what's up with the beard? You know, I haven't seen it in a little while. Uh, Grizzly Adams, what do we got going on here? <laughs> it is a different look for me, isn't it? Uh, it's a little bit different, but uh, hey, it, it works for you. You know, got that whole Brad Pitt thing going. Uh, definitely like it. Brad Pitt, huh? I'll take that. Okay, good. I, what I'm trying to do with ISSA TV Online is explain to trainers that are certified through the ISSA how they can make additional money. You know, so many of us get caught up, and I say us because I've been a trainer for a long time myself, and I know you started off as a trainer. What I want to do is expose the trainers on how they can make additional money outside of the box, not just working at a big corporate facility, you know, making six or eight, 10, 20 bucks an hour, whatever it is. And I'm here at International Fitness today because you own this gym. So that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about how you got started owning a gym. And I've asked you your five top things that you would suggest to people watching this show on what they should do to get started in the gym business. So let's talk about this gym a little bit. Tell us about International Fitness, first of all, and how you got started in it. And then then we'll get into your top five. Um, well, Clark, um, International Fitness has been around for about four years now, and um, actually, just like you said, um, I started out as a trainer, and um, it, you know, almost a, 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 an opportunity uh, fell. The uh, the original owners of this establishment they um, had a little bit of a falling out, and then they looked to sell the uh, the gym, and so the opportunity came to me right then. I talked to um, a mutual friend uh, of the other owners and uh, myself, uh, who was a businessman had some money to put in, was looking for an investment, and uh, just liked what I had to say. I had a lot of faith in me, and he helped finance me to become an owner of this facility. And now, um, four years later, we're, uh, we're actually doing really great. Uh, we focus a lot on uh, senior citizen fitness, uh, fitness uh, which is really, you know, there's a lot of uh, baby boomers in the area. It's a big market. And um, we are, we're actually going to be branching off and doing some kids' fitness stuff as well pretty soon. So um, that, those are the main things that international fitness goes through. So you're specializing. I mean, you got kids and seniors. Now, let's talk about you were in the right place at the right time. You're a hardworking guy. And I know a little bit of the backstory of how you got involved. And it's really, really a good story how he got this gym. And you were exactly in the right place at the right time. But a lot of people are at the right place at the right time, but they don't work hard enough. Or maybe they're not smart enough. Or maybe they can't see the opportunity like you did. So... Um, Let's talk about that a little bit. It was an opportunity. You hopped on it. You saw a need, and you fulfilled that need. We're in a place right now where there's lots of big globo gyms, you know, the big corporate. Matter of fact, there's a L.A. Fitness right down the street from you. Uh, I, I want to talk real quickly. How can you compete with those big gyms that have a lot of money? I mean, you've been here for, you said, what, four years, four years now. How can you compete with that? Uh, well, first off, I got to thank you for you saying that I'm smart. I've never had that go in the same uh, sentence as me before. Um, you know, it's funny you say that. If I had a nickel for every time that somebody said, "Hey, what do you think about the LA Fitness down the road? Uh, is that going to hurt you?" Um, you know, I'd be a millionaire. But um, to be honest with you, the the number one thing is is you got to find your niche. Just like I was talking about before. Yeah, international fitness is not going to compete with the masses uh, for an LA fitness. So if you if I'm really good with working with seniors, um, and then like I said, I, I really like working with the kids and sports and and whatnot. So find the thing. If you're a trainer, really look down inside. Find out what is it that you really want to help out seniors, uh, females. Emails, uh, brides, pregnancy, whatever it is, go with that niche and just be the best that you can at it. Corner that market, and then that's what's going to help you to compete with the the globo gyms that might be in your neighborhood. Okay, so now with that, I know that's one of your top five. So let's get into your top five pieces of advice for the ISSA trainers that are watching right now. And our goal not only is to give you ideas of what you can do, but it is also to help them on their way. Okay, so we know we got a person that's a trainer. We got a guy that opens a gym. You're a trainer who's got a gym. You've learned a lot along the way in four years. I want your best advice in five bullet points that will help other trainers that are watching this show uh, understand how, if they decide they want to open a gym, how they can do that. So tip number one is what? 
Tip number one is uh, just really understand that being a trainer and being a business owner, even if it's a gym, that the business that you're owning is two different things. So really take a good um, evaluation of yourself and understand, do I really want to take on the extra you know, pressures and hardships of being a business owner? Um, and, and you know, Clark, just from being an outstanding trainer yourself for years, not every guy or gal out there that's just really fit and really in shape has what it takes to become a trainer, go through the certification process and go through all those things, understand the body. And not every trainer has what it takes to become a gym owner. Um, there's a lot of things in there. You have to be prepared to now um, taking on a lot of criticism. Now, not only are you um, greeting people at the door, you have to make sure that the payroll is done. There's a lot of be behind the scene things that maybe when you just walk into the gym or you just don't understand uh, that you're going to have to take on. So number one, be um, self-evaluation, do I want to be a business owner? Yeah, that's a good point you bring up because not everyone is truly qualified. I mean, it's a goal that we all have. I think every trainer has said, oh, I'd love to own my own gym. But having done it after four years, I mean, I personally know, and hopefully I'm not letting a cat out of the bag, but this is to show how much discipline this guy has. There's an office right over here. You sl you've slept in that thing on more than one occasion. You've been here for 24 hours straight. You've cleaned the bathrooms yourself. You've cleaned the floors yourself. You've taken money out of your own pocket from what I've heard through the grapevine to pay your trainers. And, I, you know, that is a huge, huge commitment. So, like you said, people got to be ready for that. Is all of that true? Uh, well, uh, yeah, a lot of that is, is true. And um, the, the, uh, the thing is, is um, you got to... Point, it goes right into point number two. Point number two is you have to have an iron backbone to be an entrepreneur. Um, if you, you, a lot of dedication, a lot of hard work. If you're just looking to own a gym because you know you're trying to impress you know some girl or guy or whatever that you like, um, probably not exactly the route to go. There's a lot of sleepless nights. There's a lot of um, you know you have to be prepared for when people come to you why there's not you know, toilet paper in the, in the bathroom, you have to be ready to go back there and put it in there and do all those things. Um, so, yeah, you know, just like it's hard work to build, this, you know, be a great fitness model, a lot of, you know, bodybuilding, you know, or just to work with your clients, there's a ton of hard work that goes into... I, I was a Marine for six years. Clark, I know you were a Marine. Owning this business has been the absolute hardest thing that I've ever done in my life. Um, and so just be prepared to... Um, you know, you're you're not going to be praised for the successes enough, and you're going to probably take on more of the criticisms uh, than maybe you deserve. But um, iron backbone, and then it's going to take about three to five years before you really start to reap the benefits. But once you do, once you get there, it I mean, it's the it's really the best feeling in the world. Since you mentioned Marine, we want to give a big shout out to all the Marines and other military personnel that are watching this. And we want to say thank you for your service to our country. Semper Fi, God bless you. And that's awesome. We, we you know, once a Marine, always a Marine, right? Definitely. Why is this? Semper Fi Dallas, once a Marine, always a Marine. So definitely, I, I, I have a lot of friends that are still in the military. Um, and, you know, it's just my heart definitely goes out to those guys.